So welcome everybody. This is the workshop for the Android Automotive uh, Special Interest Group workshop. I don't have much slides like prepares like a presentation or seminary. I'd like to have more like an open discussion with everybody. So I have like a slides for some like a helper slides for for uh, to to better describe our current work. Uh, so that's the agenda I'd like to have. Uh, first, some introduction for the guys who are uh, pretty new of our work done for Covisa. Then uh, I would like to focus on the access for vehicle signals uh, from Android. Uh, and uh, discuss maybe the future future goals and current goals based on the on the use cases that uh, that uh, hopefully we can invent during this meeting. Maybe you'll share uh, your problems in your uh, in your companies that you could uh, that you are tackling for integration of the Android automotive and accessing the vehicle signals. Uh, like I have some like uh, statements here, like uh, if the Google API or Android API for accessing the signals, it's enough for the industry. If the permission system, so it's like uh, access control for accessing the signals are enough, maybe this is something that could be improved. And then at the last point, uh, I would like to maybe talk not focus only about the accessing the signal because the group is called Android Automotive. Uh, so we could still might have some problems with um, with the other stuff rather than signals. Like uh, maybe there are some use cases in the audio framework still to be improved for the uh, for the automotive use cases or graphics or other frameworks like user management maybe. Uh, so yeah, maybe if you are not tired enough with the introduction, I see a couple of guys here, <laughs> pretty new faces. So uh, maybe we could uh, have like, it will be better to adjust the level of the discussion based on your interest. So maybe you could start, we could start <laughs> additional introduction of everybody starting from myself. So I'm Stefan working for Tieta Every for Covisa, um, supporting the Android Automotive Special Interest Group. Right now focus on the accessing uh, the vehicle uh, from Android. So basically from this workshop, I would like to um, revise the goals that we would like to achieve during this group, gather some use cases that can be helpful for um, challenging the, the architecture that uh, we established. Maybe the architecture is not enough. Maybe, uh, maybe the architecture that uh, is already existing in AOSP is uh, the architecture that we don't need to improve everything. Maybe everything works well. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe you could start with the... Um, I'm Ray Chen, I'm still a manager from Coursera, and yeah, I'm mostly here to listen and understanding about it, and um, yeah, so not very technical person, mm -hmm. so, but um, yeah. Yeah, but at, I hope that at least you, you you have some use cases maybe for the for the automotive world, right? Even f not not in the Android, but can be also outside Android, maybe from the previous operating I IVI systems. Okay. I'm Alejandro Garrido. I'm working as a software embedded engineer and work writer. And I'm also here to um, listen if Android uh, Automotive uh, is useful in our projects, if, if they, they provide the, thing, the data we need and they will use it to our uh, use cases, scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, I'm uh, Augustin Almanzi from VNCS Motive. 
uh, sales engineering director. We have uh, we do a little work software for embedded Linux and embedded platforms on IABI and RC units, and we also have hardware products running uh, Android. Mm. Not embedded automotive, uh, so we like to learn more about that. Uh, hi, my name is Carlos Gonzalez. I work at Holbert Bosch Software, and I've uh, been working there a few years ventures for next generation vehicles. And I'm curious to see your approach for him in relation to in vehicle communication. Mm -hmm. Hello, uh, Richard Sardi, Ricardo. So we're working on um, digital experiences and uh, connected and automated vehicle um, <coughs> applications. So I'm new to Android Automotive, although I do develop uh, mobile phone apps for Android. Um, and I drew the straw with my colleague into the other parallel session. So I'm here to find out where I'm going to report back. I'm Jeff Reed with uh, Google, specifically with Android Automotive OS Telemetry. So very excited to be here, and I'm going to be on the, a fly on the wall listening. <laughs> Hello, uh, Gunnar, independent consultant, previous <laughs> technical lead for the uh, Kalisa Alliance. And then Daniel Rutger, Ford uh, Research, working on propulsion controls, and work with some interesting use cases with respect to connect the budget system for those which is currently not existing yet and of course um, Android Automotive is an enabler for some of these use cases. Yes, uh, Christian Palm is my name from a Swedish company mm -hmm. named Knowit. We are a services provider, so we help OEMs tier ones and others to implement applications, so integration of various um, uh, cost, custom solutions in, into the vehicle it could be Android Automotive, it could be Tunex or Linux and so forth. We also have some software components related to uh, Bluetooth, um, Bluetooth connectivity for entertainment, and we also do custom development on, on such systems. And, uh, I'm very interested to hear about the, yeah, the future of Android Automotive because we see it grow, uh, but also the challenges around uh, cybersecurity. The new ISO standard 214.4 um, and similar things, and also how you deal with automotive spies uh, related in relation to Android automotive for, for the future programs. Mm -hmm. Because I see a clash between the old legacy way of de developing software and the new um, super scrum <laughs> oriented uh, development or super agile, I should say. Yep. So I'm interested to hear about that. Yeah, we can discuss it uh, during this. I've already, yeah, th there was a challenge in some of the project to map the existing components for Android to the Aspice uh, requirements, traceability and stuff. So uh, yeah, we could, maybe maybe this is something that Covisa could help in the future. Yeah, so I'll go next. Uh, Matos Banyas, my name, hi everybody. I'm with Port of Europe. Um, not so much with Android right now, but I have some exposure with Android Automotive in my previous assignment as we were delivering a couple of eHub implementations with the team. But right now I'm more focused on delivering backend services for EV vehicles. Mm -hmm. Peter Geffer is also for a few work uh, responsible for connectivity, solutions, integration, uh, data analytics, uh, access to data, and data privacy. Uh, Ramon from the Cube company. Uh, Super interested to hear what the pain points so that we can help uh, transitioning from maybe Linux to Android Automotive. How can we make that easier for you? For those maybe it's hard for So happy to be here and really nice use cases and the audio graphics multi user remote UI, all of these are interesting for us. Yeah, I'm Leon Bob. I'm working in Tendai with the company. I'm developing uh, EV for as well. Uh, software platform. Yeah, thank you. Hello, I'm Sujan from NG Electronics, South Korea. Uh, NG Electronics supplies uh, Android Automotive products for several OEMs. So I like to know what is exactly Android Automotive uh, project in Kobesa and the uh, relationship with uh, Google AOK. Mm -hmm. <coughs> My name is Ulf in I'm the lead editor of the VISS specification being developed in W3C. And I'm also working in uh, multiple Covesa uh, projects like uh, CBII and, and VSS projects and, and so forth. So I'm 
general interest in the relation between Android and DSS, DISs, and so forth. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Thomas Wordig. I'm with Mercedes Benz and uh, responsible for um, software development for light commercial vehicles, uh, onboard software. And uh, I do not have that much touch points with uh, Android um, so far. Nevertheless, I'm highly interested also in seeing if there are some ways to uh, like enable commercial applications in that context, also on the vehicle, and, and uh, some small ideas around that. So I'm also excited to learn more about this overall thing. Thanks. I am uh, Matteo Giovanni with uh, Robert Bosch, and I'm interested in the data accessibility within the context of near connectors. Okay. This will be uh, also with geotech and the field of speech analytics. And I'm interested to see how uh, other models can be made to use, uh, to be used for speech management, use cases, and also to use the data for speech management applications. Yeah, hello. Uh, my name is JC. I'm from Mobile Cost Berlin. Um, yeah, I just just uh, uh, listen about uh, what's the trend uh, topics uh, in the COVID panel days. Especially the Android automotive is one of the things that I'm interested in. I'm Simon Austin from Conja. Uh, besides other things, we build apps for Android automotive. And last two years, we built a concept car um, featuring both an RBI and cluster display, um, both running on Android automotive. Uh, Chris Tingley, CTO at Conja. I work with Simon. I'm Catherine Mathis. I'm a CTO of Urbana Software Factory. Um, so we've integrated Android automotive uh, products, gas and non-gas. And actually with uh, Jeff, just before uh, the session here, we had a startup discussion on the uh, maybe interest of uh, getting pre structure uh, information that's missing in how today into NEOS. So mm -hmm. it would be interesting to get feedback also from this room uh, on, the, on, on the need or not to get the pre structure Uh, hey everyone, I'm Ashwin, uh, Bob Akaz, I'm uh, a technical leader in the um, architecture team of Volvo. Uh, we actively work with Android Automotive <coughs> OS in our cars, uh, and we're currently looking at um, uh, enabling uh, app development using uh, with, um, with better hardware abstraction layers and uh, accessible signals. So, really interesting. Uh, Andre Vendel, the BMW Group, uh, you're just, in remote, uh, just interested in the Android automotive, auto, in Android automotive use case and what's there and how can we use it in the future or whatever, and what comes up. Mm -hmm. Okay. My name is Nataka from the Renaissance, uh, Renaissance is a circle supplier. So that's why so I'm formally interested about the audience graphics, uh, physical role and stuff, but now uh, I'm attending many the automotive bootcamp every time, <laughs> so I understand a lot, but uh, especially for the VR and the VSS relationship is uh, my primary interest for today. Um, Adam Beckham, BMW Group, working on software and data architecture topics. Uh, interest is around the aligning VSS with VHAL, like how this could interact with each other. So I'm Piotr Kaczyk from Tito Weber, <coughs> and I'm participating in, in this uh, Android Automotive Special Interest Group. I was to it for two years and uh, I was also participating in audio track uh, that is currently not, not being tackled, but yeah, so it's still some kind of a topic. And we how and most interested in services and integration topics. Okay, I'm Daniel as well from uh, BMW working with Anna together and leading the VSS activities. Hi, Marcel Trup uh, coming from Serens. We are kind of a voice AI company providing white label speech recognition into automotive. So we're building very much uh, applications on top of Android Automotive for us, uh, bringing a hybrid assistant to automotive world. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm I was late CEO of NSG. Uh, we are developing navigation software, also on top of Android Automotive. And I'm curious how Cubesa and Android Automotive works in relationship with mm -hmm. Okay. Stephen. <laughs> oh, I know. You want one more? Stephen Lawrence for Renesis Electronics. I'm the head of work in uh, Renesis in, in Kavisa and the Kavisa tech stack lead. Okay. 
Uh, I guess we roll. Uh, I'm happy to hear that there are like uh, different uh, roles in gathered in this room. We have uh, people who is uh, doing the bring ups of the Android, implementing the VHAL. Uh, we have some OEMs here. We have the app developers. So uh, based on that, uh, hopefully we could gather some uh, use cases or at least you could feel the, the pain <laughs> uh, that or, or, um, or have some challenges uh, that are existing and maybe you will uh, encourage I will en encourage you to, to join and contribute to, uh, during our weekly meetings. Uh, so this is like a challenge uh, that uh, is uh, for our vehicle group that we want to evaluate if the Android automotive uh, framework is sufficient to for the for the users by users I mean either end user or OEMs or tier ones or tier twos to implement and do the bring up of their applications uh, on top of Android. So uh, based on that, uh, like two years ago, we gathered some some problems that are existing. For sure, there's a one that we need to somehow integrate Android into existing uh, into existing platforms. So Android is not like a one ECU working for uh, is uh, not one ECU working on uh, or running in the car. So uh, usually the access to the signals. Uh, happen outside. So during that, we've developed such architecture. Uh, so it's like a hybrid of two approaches. The first one is the approach that, um, let me say, existing in Android, we have a stack that we have a component of the vehicle hull, which uh, is responsible to, OEM is responsible to um, to implement that or its suppliers. And then um, Android is providing some API for the application developers. And this framework uh, using the API is connecting to the hardware abstraction layer to obtain such, um, such signals, such properties, which is called in Android. Uh, and then since uh, one of the way to uh, that we want to uh, we wanted to um, exercise was to um, introduce a tree structure for the for the signals some of you are aware of the VSS uh, running in uh, in Geneva so the signals there are organized in some kind of a tree structure we have the leaves that are grouped in some branches that might be somehow somehow helpful and uh, to utilize that, uh, GraphQL is a one of the query language that is uh, doing pretty good job for this. Uh, I mean that you could query the branch, you could query which branches are existing. Uh, so the current implementation that Android provides is pretty much flat, which means that you have like a simple get set interface that you could get a very specific uh, signal or set the very specific signal. But maybe it's not enough for the industry. That's why you want to um, introduce new, new API to do that. And for sure, for gas or for other applications that are already existing in Android, uh, we would like to provide some, let me say, legacy solution. So we still use the GraphQL for accessing the signals, but we are feeding the, the Google framework or Android framework uh, by creating some vehicle HAL component. And this brings us to ch the challenge that we need to translate the the signals that are uh, organized in a tree and are uh, actually defined in some kind of a units. We are defining the units. We are defining the uh, data type, for example, right? Uh, so we need to have one component that uh, translates from one standard to another. Uh, it's a tricky, but we believe that might be automated, uh, especially that we have every information that we that we know, 
I guess this is the best picture. So on the left, we have the um, definition of the, um, of the vehicle property uh, or you know the, the, this yeah the, the, the one of the leaf and on the right we have a um, vehicle property extracted from the Android sources. So we have all the information. The only manual work that needs to be done is to actually analyze that. Like uh, we need to actually decide. By we I mean Geneva or OEMs, depending on the discussion that we're going to have here. Um, we need to uh, bind or tell some um, in in a third format. Let me say, which property needs to be mapped to which Android uh, property, and then of course, then we need to invent how to translate. So here the situation is pretty much simple because uh, both um, tire pressure property uses the same. Uh, kilopascal unit, so there is no conversion needed, but some of those uh, are trickier, so we analyze that, and based on that, we've uh, um, came up with... Hmm? May I ask a question? Sure, 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 it's a workshop, so we just please interrupt. Um, so when you draw the arrows, you didn't actually draw an arrow from the branch to the vehicle area. Is it that... In this specific case, it would match that we find um, a branch from a tire. Uh, but in general, if you look translation between a branch in the VSS3 and the vehicle area, you don't find such good matches? Uh, that's true. That's true. That's how you have this example of, of the pressure. Here you have row one for uh, for left, right? So it is arbitrarily translated into Android uh, left front. Yeah, so uh, we could maybe show the um, example map that we have because uh, we established to map some, some kind of a YAM format for, for such mapping. So if you see here, here is the example mapping. So as you can see, we have row one left, and then we have a specific uh, object which we could map. Yeah, sure. Oh. Yeah. So uh, here are some more complex example. Like I would like to always uh, talk about the fuel level. So in Android, Android defines the fuel level as a percentage of the fuel tank, and inside the VSS, it is, uh, I guess, it is uh, kept as a milliliters. So we need to have some compact, uh, well, complex translation that involves uh, either querying additional property, which is the fuel capacity, because we need to translates from rel relative to non-relative uh, unit. So our converter is able to do that. So just you need to uh, use the complex translation. And then uh, that's the goal to have a one file, one YAML file that needs to be maintained instead of uh, creating a custom translation in, I don't know, CPP or C file and maintain the, the boilerplate code, because this is easily to be generated. Most of the properties are one-to-one -one translator uh, translations, or even very simple one that you don't need to do nothing. Let me say, like, like uh, Boolean, it's made the same. One comment maybe about the instantiation. We, we had the discussion in, in VSS as well. We have like instances, but on branch level. So like, and then uh, the, the idea is that every signal underneath uh, is basically then comes uh, like like it's multiplied. There you have more more instances than for the for the leaps. And there was actually uh, inspired by Android. There was a discussion to put that information at the end, but it then would 
conflict with the with the with the whole branch uh, and signal surgery because then you add mm -hmm. branches to the leaves and uh, they, uh, that was pretty ugly. So, um, but uh, this information uh, like uh, row one or like the row is like one attribute, but on the on the branch level, so that, that you could uh, mm -hmm. uh, get it from there. So you have the instantiation information. You would have uh, as well. Then you don't have a hard coded one for the row one or something like this. But then you would say, okay, like this. This instance uh, definition is like the, the first part of the string and the other one the left, later. Mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the information is there, but it's, uh, like, the concepts are a bit different, so it's a bit active, the translation. Yeah, 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 I, I completely understand you, especially for the cars that could have multiple rows. So everything needs to be done manually. Like uh, some human needs to analyze that row one, right? that is kept in the middle of the of the tree like a, one of the branches needs to be translated for example here in in the right front i mean in this example you would have in excel you have instance uh, like i don't know row one to five or something mm -hmm. and then in the wheel you have left and right uh, the information is there but somewhere in a different place in the tree yeah yeah i agree but this is like a <laughs> pain or the, the problem of the vss itself right but here uh, the problem is highlighted from the Android side that uh, it Android is providing some uh, kind of uh, not infinite uh, um, enumerations for for the wheel positions or for the wheels, right? Because we I envision that there might be some car with like eighteen wheels, <laughs> or maybe some I don't know three wheel cars with the one middle wheel on the front. So I mean, this the example wheel is like it's so like, but if you have uh, doors you have already like like maybe less or more like and uh, or, or, or like seats mm -hmm. or like uh, sensors if you have like uh, distance control sensors and yeah. things like that that might vary a lot now the way the hard coded like just have four possibilities or something is also yeah understood and that's actually that's that's one of the reason that we could think that uh, Android API is not sufficient for the automotive use cases. That's maybe it's a question for everybody. Maybe it's worth to introduce new API or replace the one that Android is providing. That's why we 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 are exercising the the different API using GraphQL that we could directly operate on the VSS instead of doing the translation. So translation still needs to be done for the legacy purposes, for third party developers, for uh, for gas, for or something. <laughs> yeah, but 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 that's true. That's true. Uh, but yeah, this is one thing that Covisa could help provide such translation. And the question is still: Do we want, as Covisa, prepare some kind of a catalog of already existing mapping, or we should just? Provide a tool, tool like uh, okay, this is the schema for the for the mapping YAML file, and each OEM could uh, do the mapping itself because some of the decisions are made arbitrary. Like uh, we could have different leaves for um, engine oil temperature in the car, or uh, yesterday I guess Graham uh, said some stuff about the. Um, engine speed, which engine speed should be used, right? So uh, Android has uh, only one property, which is called engine speed. So th for the third party developers who creates like, I don't know, very simple application, don't care from which this engine speed comes. So some decisions needs to be made arbitrarily and connected to the, to the specific leaf. I don't know if it's a role t for Genevi to create such. Oh, sorry, Covisa. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's the first time today. First time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. No, Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the GitHub is correct one. I use the, the fresh <laughs> Covisa GitHub. Uh, I would say it's something you would want to maintain, but at the end of the day, it's a community, isn't it? So people have to step up to maintain that mapping. I mean, if you've got a standard VSS set mm -hmm. value in that standardization, then why would you want that to go towards chaos in Android property sense? You know, you want a consistent mapping, I think. What do you mean chaos? You mean uh, that... 20 different people deciding that they 
Uh, yeah, yeah, actually that's the good question, but uh, I'm not sure if each OEMs are implementing the same, uh, is impl implementing the same uh, VSS leaves or providing the same signals. I'm, I'm talking just purely in the standard VSS catalog, so you, you would retain a standard catalog plus X private. Okay, so I imagine that in the VSS catalog we have like, I don't know, three vehicle speeds that one can be gathered from some sensors on the wheel, the other one can be like calculated from something, right? But would that be part of the community discussion? What's needed on the Android side? Which one do you? Yeah, that's true, maybe, but... Uh, the people can always ignore the standards. <coughs> Mm -hmm. If you find a way of 80% of the industry had the one and 20% used the other two, then, then the 100% used all three. You see what I mean? Okay. Yeah, but then we need to. Yeah, but perhaps maybe it's a question or maybe it's a task for the for the VSS group, because then you have the larger audience not only interested into, like, very focused on the Android implementation, maybe it's, uh, you know. Well, I think in the mapping sense, you need the Android community, don't you, to say what they, what they need. But you don't, you don't need any specific uh, domain knowledge to, to, to establish the mapping, right? So we don't need to have, like, Android knowledge. I mean, the problem is not, like, about the, the, the mapping, but, like, how do you handle the, the parts which are not there in the like I don't know, I don't know by heart how many attributes are available today in the VHub. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot. 60, 70, something like that. 80. <laughs> how do we handle additional like 100? And what kind of like uh, naming convention we should apply on that? Right. Yeah, that's so that's the question. From our point of view, it would be nice actually to kind of like follow the naming <clears throat> convention of the VSS and actually like generate mm -hmm. the AOSP ID or AOSP mm -hmm. ID mm -hmm. on these things. Right? Yeah, that that was. Uh, those top this topic was already discussed during our meeting. So, if it's worth to let me say flat the the VSS and provide all the properties using the Android uh, framework, right? So we could like generate as as you said, we could generate like vehicle underscore chassis underscore blah 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 blah, and then we have like a million of the Android vendor IDs, uh, or since they are all like non-standardized by Android, maybe you could use our own framework and directly from the application uh, access the, um, the vehicle signals, right? Using some GraphQL, for example. Then we have like tree structure. Uh, yeah, but in that case, I have to like maintain a lot of software components running inside the Android stack, right? So then I don't have any benefits from the Android. Like if I do this, then I have like a lot of benefits from the whole stack, right? Like Which benefits? Like SDK in sense of okay. like the generating the manifest file. Yeah, manifest but, but file you need to uh, maintain your own SDK, right? Because uh, yeah, developers are not aware of the new if I, vendors. If I, if I deploy like three or four additional services on the vehicle side, I have to maintain them. Mm -hmm. Someone has to be responsible for that and someone has to have like some sort of like uh, service level agreements like with the other teams. Right? And that cost. Right? The access rights and so on, like everything like like uh, notification that's on, you have to re-implement everything yeah. which, is, which the system gives you. Mm -hmm. There's also a third party software issue with different implementations of mapping, because if you're mapping different values to the same Android value, but from the top level software, you don't know which one's being mapped between different OEMs, the software could act differently. Okay. Yeah, <coughs> that's true. Because you have signals that the OEM decide to what vehicle properties. Mm -hmm. That's in a problem already. It's not at page level. Oh. So there is alignment for like these 60, 70, 80 signals, right? But so the is, is it already decided, like, the, out of these 12 engine speeds, which one is? I mean, it, 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 it usually has like a description there, like if you open the VHUB now, yeah. there, there should be like some details what they're asking for, right? Um, but uh, the bigger problem is like how, how do we extend it, right? And how do we find the alignment across OEMs 
that we are doing it in the same way, right? Because VHAL doesn't tell you anything, and it doesn't tell you like how you can maintain that. Mm -hmm. But with VSS, we could potentially like do this. So as an alternative, uh, if uh, you don't like the, the let's say the GraphQL like uh, solution because it is quite complex, uh, it has to to be maintained, and so on and so forth. I'm just saying that <laughs> <laughs> it just needs additional services. So maybe the, the flat structure is is uh, a way to go because we can just wrap it uh, with a library. It would be quite simple that we just understand the. Uh, <coughs> um, VSS yeah. schema, which is quite stable, quite fixed, and then it can be translated the or, or let's say the combine the the, the, the requested uh, branches uh, and uh, send appropriate um, keys to the to the to, to the VCAL. We have already implemented the, the whole the data path, so, yeah. so the, the data chain is working, okay. and you can expect that. Uh, let's see the value vendor extensions that are being implemented by the VHAL will conform with the library that, that, that will operate on, on the naming level of, of uh, DSS. So I guess that this could be kind of an alternative yeah. with a less artifacts to maintain. Yeah. Good, good. Stefan, do you think you could support that with a picture? Uh, uh, with the picture of... Uh, what sure. is being proposed? So you were saying about this architecture? Uh, not necessarily. No, I mean, just the, the, the part that is... Are you talking about creating a new API on the Android side where you can access things? Not, right? not, uh, not API, because we have uh, here a framework model. So I guess that this is kind of a third approach, because this is the second, so that you have accompanying uh, services that will provide uh, VSS data. Mm. Uh, yeah, by a separate service. Um, and uh, on, the, on the third approach, you can you can utilize the. Oh no! Or am I wrong? No, that, that's correct. No, that so you have the car service and car API. This is the that Google is, API, yeah, right? Yeah, that, that, that is the Google part that, that implements the, the let's say uh, data chain, and you can have additional library that will understand the VSS and will translate it into appropriate keys uh, with some proposed like let's say Proviso manner. So that on, on the API level, yeah, if you're right, you can uh, you can uh, create a query with uh, with a uh, VSS syntax, but it won't be separate service, but just a library, just a mm -hmm. library that will be wrapping uh, calls to the to the car API. Mm -hmm. But this library needs to be embedded into each application, right? That's right. So if we uh, maintain different sets of of the vendor properties on different car lines. Then we need to have different uh, libraries, right? Yes, this is this is another <laughs> space for discussion. <laughs> how to how to handle uh, different variants, and uh, if uh, if the car needs to uh, to to provide all the VSS data or just a subset, if we need a separate service for for capabilities discovery, for example, that's that's the separate discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, maybe I didn't but we have the custom property. Uh, yes, and the basic idea is, is to use these custom properties to transport. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then we don't need you mentioned to library to each application, but as in the Android already provides the pipeline for the custom. It is, it is, but the the, the pipeline understands the new properties as a additional IDs, Correct, yeah. which you need to know, right? So there is no discoverability. Exactly. That, that's why right. the second thing is that it is not very convenient or elegant to, to, to put some long strings uh, with a call to with some <coughs> magic meaning. Yeah, it's, it's not, not really convenient and it's not really nice. And for example, if you would like just to apply GraphQL to, to, <coughs> to be realizing, you need to value for the whole branch. So, uh, enumerating it one by one is, is not the, the most optimal way to do it. So you can have a company library that will make the life easier for you and will understand the, the VSS and will be able to create from the request a uh, um, list of, of uh, flat keys that will be actually vendor extensions. Yeah, but the question is if it's really useful for some somebody, right? Yes, that's, that's a question. Because we could create like a 
we are inventing the use case just as a developer i would like to query the whole branch and gather all the properties from the one branch but maybe it's very unlikely scenario right maybe everybody is still gathering just like uh, each signal at once right so they are subscribing to individual signals which are the vss leaf in that case so maybe it's still the the flat structure maybe it's enough maybe you could use the underscores to uh, or to flat the, the whole VSS name, collecting all the all the branches into one name. Maybe it's enough. So actually, this is the question to, to the application developers because they, they are the, the, the customers of, of this uh, possible APIs and they know how how to operate and they know how they would like to, to create the UIs because we are mostly talking about user applications here. Yeah. So either way, they are using Car API in that case, right? So right now. Well, I guess ninety percent of developers will use Car API because that that works in any case across all the cars. Um, it's it's easily explained. I mean, as a, as a, as a normal human being, mm -hmm. not not necessarily a developer, if I want to know the car speed, yeah, but there it, is logic in it. Yeah, uh, and I uh, I get you, uh, but still we are uh, talking more about like. IVI use cases when you need to create some, you are a third party developer, you are creating some generic app that needs to run everywhere. But I envision that might be some scenarios for OEMs that they want to have their own closed source services running in the IVI, which might have different accesses for like some kind of private signals, let me say, which are not uh, really useful for the third party developers, but for the for the car manufacturer, it might be for some analytics, for some, I don't know, uh, diagnostics or something like this. I don't know if it's, it's a matter of having such services on, a, on the Android, since Android is like an infotainment system, right? So it might be like separate partition running Linux and uh, doing such diagnostic stuff. Well, I guess it depends, because if, if you're thinking of, about what, what would those use cases be, one that I can even think of is, um, sending analytic data remotely, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I already have my Android system that provides me with internet connection that has libraries that can support me storing data offline and syncing it in the right time, and I, I imagine that's easier to manage than implementing a second operating system that does all that separately. Usually there are some separate operating system running in the same car, right? So there is not like, yeah, but I get I get your point that uh, yeah that's true that Android usually has uh, some logic to connect to the internet. A lot of the HTTP framework is there. Uh, so yeah, as always, it's a open, it's a matter of discussion if we should go into this flat um, API or still maintain some structured one. Maybe it's we need to be more flexible and then have some more generic solution than, than the library that uh, we talked before. Maybe one comment. I guess the question is, what's the end state? Are you trying to design for a third party startup that's you know bringing in an application or is the intent to shield everything that the OEM owns away from somebody else. Um, there is a goal. I mean, depending on what you want to achieve, this will look very different. Yeah, I guess uh, that's that, that the solution here is like a intermediate solution because still, even if we invent our new API that might be more convenient for the developers, like third party developers and also the, um, the OEM developers, right? Uh, so, but still we need to, right now we need to still maintain the, the let me say legacy API, right? But maybe uh, the, the get set API that uh, Android is proposing right now, it's not enough for the industry. But that's the question. It's not like a statement that it's, it's not enough. We need to create our own. Maybe uh, it's enough for the industry. Maybe we need to just 
it's I mean, but the discussion, it seems like we uh, we think it's not going to change. Maybe tomorrow there's a new release, a new version, and uh, in a year from now uh, there might be another signal. I mean, right? <coughs> but we're comparing a state that we know is existing today. Mm -hmm. And it's a hand and egg problem, right? So you could tell, tell him, hey, just, you know, adapt the 450 signals that we need, or we just throw everything away and we adapt uh, the language they use. So, right? It's, it's a state today. We, yeah. we don't know where they are going. That's true. Maybe tomorrow we have 20 more signals. That's know, true. Right? That's the pain with uh, all the. Uh, mm, Features that we want to implement not only for the vehicle, but we could have like a I don't know multi-user management or multi-window that was before right so uh, each OEM imp or supplier implemented their own solution Then there is a new AOSP delivery and they should throw everything out or just adapt They create some wrappers for their own API I agree with the gentleman here said that you know everything that sits on top of the vehicle profits from the structure that's in the framework Right. And that would maybe that would change over time and evolve. Uh, and essentially, what you don't have, you need to find a workaround until a certain structure is there. Maybe in some cases it will be there. Maybe in some cases it will never be there. So you need <coughs> to help yourself. But actually, the, the, the framework part is, is quite transparent and doesn't contain much functionality. It's just simple get set. Subject yeah, and access control. <coughs> Yeah, that's true. Access control, but the access control is right now, at least at the current state, it is limited because the it is a possible possibility to create your own restrictions, but they are some of the properties that has some uh, uh, how it's called uh, permissions. <laughs> uh, so, so there are a group of permissions arbitrarily chosen that like this permission, like called vehicle information could uh, guard this and that signal. There is no way that you could, uh, you know, create different groups. You could have your own vendor permissions for your own signals, but you cannot modify the one that uh, is being arbitrarily chosen by, by Google, right? you can reuse them like if there is a permission for rotation that might be enough to get a speed of the release for example mm -hmm. yeah but if I, you as an OEM want to introduce new signal uh, no uh, reuse the one signal but with the different security policy you're not able to do that right I don't know if that's the case maybe I just invented some unlikely scenario but I imagine that might be some case like this so, uh, something that I can see work is, I mean, the car service is a group of services, actually, so there's not just one plug, e there is a, I don't know, kind of control of the property service, there's a number of other services. Yeah, actually, this, there is a one property service, but it exposed different uh, managers, let me say. You have, like, HVAC manager, you have, like, a inform, car information manager, something like this, but it, they are, like, wrapping the calls for the property. Manager uh, service. But what, what I want to say is, nothing stops you from providing your own additional services. Like there could be, a, I don't know, the BMW service that does mm -hmm. something for, for for the OEM, and you could you could add a VSS service, which could be, for example, if we take that uh, that VSS file uh -huh. stru structure by a code generation, um, it's flattened through the VP how mm -hmm. types file. Um, and, and then you automatically generate a code for the VSS service as well. Question yeah. is then how, who would have permission to access it? Um, what, what, how, what does the service implement? That could be GraphQL or it could be based on a naming convention again or something completely new. But That's true. Would That's be true. Uh, it through the how uh, and, and just automatically generate the code and don't start. Yes, well, this is something that we've uh, evaluated. So there was a different architecture. Functionality, I don't have the. Uh, the picture here, but it was exactly that's what what you said. We have like a copy of those two into like a, I don't know Covisa Car API that provides same API, but with the different subset of the properties. Even we had uh, like different hull, hull, not vehicle hull, because uh, <coughs> it might be you know connected by some third party. How did that work for you? I'm sorry. How how did it go for you? What's your experience with that? Uh, actually, from the supplier perspective, as I am, 
for me it was working okay <laughs> but uh, depends on the interest in the group so that time there was an interest that uh, maybe flat hierarchy or uh, like providing uh, that solution was not enough let's use a uh, graphql because it has like a fancy already existing tool chains that you could embed it into your application and then provides a third party developer some different api that they used to because uh, graphql that time was rather sexy technology let me say the, the, that concept of course could use any protocol yeah about that specific technology, I think. Yeah, but it, it is a different for the one that uh, were existing in the framework. So, uh, because here, application is directly connecting to some, uh, by using some other pro protocol or query language to the, to the server that, or gateway that provides the signals. So it's, it is avoiding going through the framework, which has some benefits or not, because then we are uh, not really relying on the Android framework. We are having, we might maintain all the, all the stack. Um, yeah, but that's true. Uh, we've evaluated such a uh, solution. I'm, I'm thinking from a developer perspective mm -hmm. now, uh, not not the app developer, uh, that I need to comply with the end of permission system. Mm -hmm. so, for example, and be one, uh, I get all the system permissions, whatever. And I could, could provide a service that if if there is a GraphQL service that exposes all the DSS properties, um, if, if there's something that all, all the OEMs agree on, mm -hmm. I could provide a service something like. I can lock all your data to my bank and share the data with whoever else. Um, that, that's just one idea. I mean, so you're saying that this uh, server part could be running on the Android, or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we just uh, made it as like an external one, but it might be running on the Android itself. <coughs> the other benefit is that one server could serve the properties to different operating system at once, right? So you could have like AGL running for the, for the cluster and then IVI as an Android, and they could reach the same signals standardized in VSS from a one gateway. And you can have actually plenty of Android instances and uh, taking care about which one is the master and which one is, is the slave could be problematic and will introduce another uh, challenges. Yeah. So, yeah, giving it on external partition or external ECU uh, will make things easier, actually, because you, you're already using client server infrastructure. Yeah, the, the whole thing. Uh -huh. mm, okay, uh, so I would like to uh, revise some future goals right now since, uh, I've, as I said, we are um, focused more on, on this component, which is translating from VSS. Let's forget about GraphQL here. Like we can assume that here as an input, we have like a VSS uh, standardized signals and as the output we are providing the one for the android it could be either just a limited set of the uh, current aosp api is providing or we could extend it using uh, like vendor extensions and provide all the properties using that way but this uh, produces some work items like uh, shall we standardize the mapping and leave it to the community, or we could just provide, uh, provide the tooling for that. Uh, like the one that we could say like, hey, let's, we are, as Covisa, we are uh, providing you the, the, the implementation of the VHAL, which uses the, um, the maybe this is the, the better, so. So we, as Covisa, we could provide you the, the VHAL, which uh, uses some generated map, which is 
generated from, from the YAML file, and then we are providing all the signals in the AOSP format. Or we could do both. We could do uh, this. The question is uh, if it's uh, needed for the industry. <laughs> I as a, one of them as a member of the supplier for for me it is uh, might be helpful but uh, I know that some silicon vendors are already implementing the VHAL so there is no way to replace it because uh, the vehicle uh, VHAL implementation is already having the um, gathering the signals in their own like either either gathering directly from CAN. Uh, Uh, yeah, and of course, uh, question about the security, or uh, shall the is the permission system that Android provides enough, or we need to create some different scenario? Uh, sorry, different uh, way to to access uh, to to guard the access for the signals. So for the future, we would like to finish the. This POC with the tooling, uh, and then go into some other topics that I would like to gather from you, maybe. I've heard that there is uh, some interest into other topics than done the accessing the vehicle signals. Uh, I've heard something about graphics or audio, but those topics have the same problem as we discussed before that uh, we could start implementation of the, some feature for audio or some feature for the graphics, but then another Android delivery came and is uh, making our implemented feature redundant. So maybe we just need to focus on gathering the use cases, structure it somehow, and propose such uh, list to, to Google maybe, or establish some new channel for communication. So at Volvo, we've been ideating around this quite a bit, and uh, signal access is an issue. Uh, one, of the, one of the biggest issues that we currently have is uh, the detection mechanism that we have with Android. So because of the way it's grouped, so you have normal permissions, dangerous permissions, signature, mm -hmm. and privilege. And so if you have an application that, that wants to use, say, the VIN number, it's a seemingly simple property, it's a privileged signal or a signature signal. Um, and that requires the app to be bundled with ERS or be signed with mm -hmm. Apple key, which is not ideal. Uh, the premise here is that if, you're, if you can access that from an API, like a remote server, given that you have right credentials, it's already in the car, you should be able to do the same thing. Right there, just take it as long as you're authorized. Um, so what we've been thinking about was uh, why not have um, a service as part of the as part of the Android operating system that sits at the system level that has access to all of these uh, signals that are protected and privileged. Uh, but then you, you, as an application, you can request these signals uh, provided you're authorized. So we have an abstraction layer. So if you have a service and you have an abstraction layer on top of it, that takes care of these things, these complexities, and it just exposes simple APIs, simple clean APIs to applications. So how do we, as OEMs, feel about that? It's something that I want to the table. Uh -huh. So you're saying that uh, you made some equivalent for the car API car service? So we have a car API as it is right now. That's, uh -huh. that's provided by Google. Of course. As it is. Uh, what we're proposing is uh, a service that runs alongside that. Okay, in parallel. Yeah, to, hmm? uh, and you have, uh, let's call that a signal service. And that service then talks to a, an authentication service, let's say, uh, that's responsible for authorizing the application in some way, in some way, shape, or form. And then you have uh, an abstraction layer or a library on top of that, that application sees. The application sees the library, and the library sees the service. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I'm thinking of here. Yeah. And whether you want to use GraphQL, or the discussion for discovery, so. or do we want to just have like 
APIs uh, as part of that library that we constantly maintain and update based on mm -hmm. the same the next week. Mm -hmm. But when do you, uh, where do you map the uh, the um, the permissions with the signals inside the service, or you have like, your own deployment file? So the yeah, so the service maps. The service has full access to everything. As long as the application is authorized, it's able to then get those signals and deliver it to you. And the authorization comes from a load service that could be OAuth or something. Yeah, yeah, that's something that we're not sure about. I mean, ideally, we don't want to have too many network calls either. So we want to try and see if we can keep things locally within the car. Yeah. Uh, that, that might mean that uh, it might be a matter of having some sort of configuration call at boot up. So like when, when you boot the service, it maybe does a configuration call, gets the keys and so on um, that you need to, or that you might need to authorize that application. Mm -hmm. Could even set them offline. Yeah, like it, exactly. Yeah. And then you can also, like, revoke, if you find that that application is malicious or something, it might just be a matter of, like, changing the configuration file in your service, and then the next time you start the card, that application. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, uh, it's rather similar to the to the part, <laughs> the the left one with the GraphQL. We had like an authentication service running on the on the Android, but it was the service is util, utilizing package manager still for the permission management, but uh, because it has like a, I believe it's pretty secure right now because. It, so I. I don't think so. I mean, it's secure, sure, but I don't think it's genuine or not. Uh, that's true. That's true. But you could in uh, this authentication service could uh, introduce your own set of the permissions, mm -hmm. so uh, can be mapped somewhere else. So you're still using Android permissions. Yes, we are at the moment. Okay, so there is no like custom token or custom authentication. No, but that's, but that's what we're thinking of. We're thinking if that would make more sense. Mm -hmm. For what we want, because the biggest problem that we, the challenge that we are facing right now, is that we cannot expose things that are protected without without doing weird things like signing the app that doesn't have permission. That's true. Do, really, to be honest, we have a lot of third parties willing to build amazing applications, but they just can't build anything interesting with what's currently publicly available. Like, what's what can you build with this with the speed signal? Maybe a speedometer. Hmm. I mean, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> That's true. Um, I, I think it's a great idea, but from a user perspective, I mean, keep that in mind. The user's completely losing control of what app can access what. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's, yeah, I guess that's, that's one of the challenges, and it's about like finding a good way of going forward with this. So the authentication could be a combination of the user based authentication and the OEM based authentication. Could be, yeah. I mean, the problem is not authentication, the problem is privacy. Can then you have this big bad guy called GDPR, <laughs> <laughs> and if you if you kind of like go too granular, then it might overload your system. So I don't know. It's <clears throat> and actually, there is one piece missing, which is your smartphone that will also connect to the car services and take some data. Yeah, but the smartphone is using the the car API, right? And that's another question. <laughs> Because I, I think that, that, that there's no um, good way currently for, for doing it or, or no standard way of doing it and each OEM has to deal with it on itself how to, how to access it and they need to separately try it applications for, for a vehicle and for the smartphone and what if we could use the same APIs from the smartphone and from the in-vehicle application? Mm -hmm. But isn't the Android Auto works that way? That it provides the API from your smartphone that you could use vehicle speed from the car that you are connected to. I'm not really sure. Have okay. Never been a writing application for this. I mean, Android Auto, not Android Automotive, right? Android Auto. Mm -hmm. Like get to this projection. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This projection. So yeah, I guess that since projection is so, since all the logic for the projection happens on the smartphone. It has some access to to the vehicle data. So I guess it is an API available for that. Because I'm not actually using templates. So you tell, hey, I'm interested in this kind of data, but your app is not actually rendering. And that's how it works. 
Um, not not the rendering, uh, yeah, but it's. No, I mean rendering or accessing the data. I think mostly like, hey, I'm this app and I want this kind of template, but it's up to somebody else to to do the actual work. By and work, um, what do you mean by work? Actually, in that case, so gathering the data, showing it, but using your template. Mm -hmm. I, I may be wrong, but that's something vague I remember from Android output. No, uh -huh. that's true. So you basically build the app with like abstract concepts like screens and stuff, and then the system decides like what a screen is and yeah. what a page is. And yeah, yeah, but the, the application is can can be responsible for the content of the screen, right? Yeah, but you, you might that. So you could create your own, I don't know, text that uh, with some logic like, hey, you're driving too fast, yeah. something like this. So you need to have an access to the vehicle speed yeah. from the from the smartphone. Yeah. I think he's just saying that the UI isn't like you have no control of like what the UI. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, so vehicle signals look off. Okay. Yeah, so maybe we could, uh, we could uh, go back into that solution and provide like a similar to the car API. Maybe we could extend our YAML file for the mapping with additional stuff like custom properties, something like this, or OEM properties. Uh, and then our authentication service could use. So I imagine that here we could have like a AOSP permission, something like this. And then we could create that mapping in the YAML. And then from this, we can generate the XML file that package manager uses for uh, for the package authentication. I don't know if it's possible. Yeah, but this is something that uh, we, could, we could evaluate. Other than gas, would you then rely on the car API service? Because I mean, effectively, what we're talking about is building a better car API service. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I mean, we have the car API service is good enough in the sense that it provides what you need as long as you have the right level of access. So if you if you if you're a system app, then you're great. But then, yeah, we, I think there is an implied integration layer on top of it to make it useful for it. So yeah. We need gas plus something else. Sorry, can I ask you a question uh, just from the architecture that you proposed? Is there a reason why you're not just building your library on top of the car API rather than kind of duplicating what the car API does? In no, yeah, we don't want to duplicate what the car API is doing. But uh, the issue is uh, with the way that it is right now. Uh, the protection levels will only give you so many signals. Yeah, so I was thinking if you build, if your library is platform signed and your library is implemented as a client of the car API, and the car API has access to all the signals. But, but library? Platform signed, but library, library you mean service, right? Or? Because the library is just like a dependency in your application. That's true, it's yeah. embedded into but your IPK. Service, yeah. yeah, if it's a service, then it's, of course it's, it's got access. But then, yeah, but your application won't see that, or shouldn't see that directly. Does that make sense? Um, the other thing, though, is that even for like a, a platform signed application or a system application, um, I think this sort of thing would make more sense because uh, just because you're, um, if you're a platform signed, if you're a platform signed app, uh, perhaps you you shouldn't have access to all the all the properties that are available for platform sign apps. Say your app only needs the VIN number, right? And to get the VIN number, then, sorry, um, you need to you need to currently you need to sign your app with the VIN. But then then also due to like a host of other signals that you probably shouldn't access. So it'd be nice to like scope these signals. Say say with given this token or something, you know, you scope and get this signal. That sort of thing, so that you don't have these all of a sudden all these signals that you can do with things like. Yeah, I was just wondering if you're uh, if this if you could develop your own service on top of the car API. Yeah. And make that service be inside an, an app or yeah. Yeah, be inside an app that is platform signed, then you can <coughs> then 
in the whole app as well, have your authentication channel. And then if another app wants access to just the bin number, it will talk to your app. Your yeah. app is platform side, it will get it from the car API. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but then, and then you have some other authentication to return it to that app if it passes your your new authentication uh, mechanism that you want to add. Yeah, like, I, think, I think we're saying the same thing. Okay, I, I just kind of yeah. thought that you you were suggesting doing that without going through the car API at all. Yeah, I mean, we're, the car API is, oh yeah, I mean, the car API will have to be abstracted in this, in this scenario, right? Because that's like the, that's probably the only way to like ensure that you're going to the right channels to get the things you want. Because if you go straight to the car API, then you're going to be met with the same issues that you currently have. You're going to send him back saying that this is a signal I can't give it to you. No, sorry, but when I say you, I mean your new uh, yeah, yeah. service that you plan like to develop that will only be managed by your company. Yeah, uh, but hopefully based on some standards. Uh, the, the only reason, uh, sorry, I'm still running into this, but yeah. the, the reason why I, I thought it's it's worth trying to build on top of the car API if possible rather than something like this, which is quite separate, is because yeah, it is, it is on top. But I think the thing is the car the car API is something that, that comes from Google. It's part of the. I mean, we don't want to like quantify what we get from Google because Google, that will make it difficult to like do OTAs. Yeah, that was going to be my thing. So we want to make sure that we're we're adding things in a safe way. <coughs> Yes, yeah, so like a new, any new version from Google, yeah. which expands the car exactly. API. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So could Codebase develop that, that service yeah. with your authentication in it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and then scope, and have the scoping of authentication yeah. all around the service. And, and then open source that for any <coughs> platform that wants to use it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Maybe it makes sense as well that we ask Google, like, if they have any last run, be more granular access mechanism. Like, what would we jump on then kind of solution? No comment. Can't speak on any future plan. Hmm. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Sorry, but if you do these kind of things, uh, you might be able to do that in AOSP. And if you want to go gas, Google might, uh, might need to whitelist some of them. So you go into a bit of a. Depending on what you are exposing, even for OEMs, you might be needing not to let that happen. So you might need to be whitelisted. What do you mean, like, as in the admin? Uh, so, I don't know, if you want to get, like, the, some unique ID, like the Mac or something, like, really that identifies that device, then you publish it for Google partners or PDK or something like that, you need to be whitelisted. Yeah, the Apple needs to be whitelisted. And there's already a process for that, like, you can Yeah, but your service now is the app, so your, no. your service is exposing it for everyone. No, so so no, no, so in that case, you're saying, like, oh, I'm deploying a service that has access to everything. Yeah, and then you need to say, like, okay, the Google needs to be... No, but the service, the service is part of the OS. So it's... it's, it's it, yeah, yeah, but if you want to publish it for Google... It's not published for Google. Though. Okay, if you go away OSP, then... And, yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be like OPR, for instance. Yeah, yeah, but uh, what then is if you want to go Google Automotive, yeah. they yeah. need to approve your view. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is that this is part of the OS. When we do an over the air update, we, do, we have to do these patterns for the car. So it won't go to the Play Store. I know, I know. That's what we mean. No, I mean, if you use the Google. Yeah, we don't have to make compliance. But yeah. you didn't you didn't bring the compli compliance if you're still supporting the the car API that that, that GAS yeah, is providing, right? From my previous experience, if you expose something that Google is not happy with, you need to be whitelisted if you want to use their service. If you want to go with AOSP, that's fine. You do whatever you want. But then when you go to class, so if you want to have that like the Android gas certified sticker, yes. you need to be compliant with CDD and pass the CTS, STS, and blah blah blah, right? Yeah, but if, you, if they notice that you have a service exposing X, yes. they will say no. This field is not valid. So you cannot yes. propose your own framework. You can, and you can discuss with them, <laughs> and they might want to list you. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, because uh, if it if it's not if it if it's not listed in CDD, then you're free to do that, right? More than that, it goes to politics almost. <laughs> Been there, done that, as well. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. I don't know how many here has released a gas. 
or maybe they cannot say it, but <laughs> <laughs> it would be interesting to know those who have worked in the release to Google, that these kind of things happen. Yeah, I mean, we haven't faced problems like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have like a lot of services that are sitting in We're not exposing things currently to applications to respond to what people. Yeah. yeah, no, even me, even me as an audience, to get access to the build ID, or not the build ID, but the, the Mac or like unique identifier, I have to get that ID to Google. Mm -hmm. Because it's a unique identifier now. Mm -hmm. It's their brand behind that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go away, it's Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's like, I guess if you touch it, yeah, if you start getting into the gas stuff, gas parts, then it's then it requires that. But then I guess we're talking about specifically talking about like legal properties. Um, that then goes to the how which is yeah, yeah, it's all like, yeah. Which then should be okay. Yeah, that might be okay. Yeah. Let's try the politics. Yeah, or <laughs> the government. Okay. But how do you cope with the with the granularity? You're saying that uh, you have your own permissions for different uh, like you mapping your custom permissions with the scope somehow. Like the so given a token, the token scope like certain signals. Uh, so <coughs> you only have access to that scope. Mm -hmm. But the, are you still using the Android permission system for that? No, not. Okay. Yeah, because then then you have this like uh, uh, that you have like three kinds of permissions: the the dangerous one, the the, yeah, the one that's high. Good yeah, uh, but, but is there not something like like such a standard already, some kind of available VISS? Uh, yeah, I, I was actually reading VISS 2.0, yeah. which, which is still in I mean, you, you, draft, you, you can you can blo deploy it, or you can deploy VISS server as as a service, which which is directly using like the VSS. And yeah, there you have like the scopes and the purposes, yep. and even the the authentication mechanism. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I was reading about like earlier, but yeah. Yeah, we could do like get your Yeah, that's great input for this. Yeah, but it just it just proves that the they, that the API that is provided here it's not sufficient for all. And it is a bit messy to go straight to the car API from the application. I'm sorry? I feel like it is a little bit messy to go straight to the car API. Um, and yeah, and get down to the low levels just to get access to something like I don't know the speed or something. It should be cleaner than that. Actually. It is very verbose, in my opinion, to have to go straight to the car API. But uh, you're talking this from the <laughs> from the <laughs> app developer or yeah, for the from an application point of view? Okay, so for the application, you are just having like a wrapper for the yeah. So having a having cleaner APIs than the current like get set model is what I'm saying. Okay. But, but I don't understand your problem like with the access mechanism that you get right now from the Android. Like, do you guys have any kind of like validation process which apps should go through and what kind of things they're actually saying? Um, uh, validation process for the hack or? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you said like you could get access to signals, but you cannot say like which signals they want to have. No, it's that it's more that if you want access to something like the VIN number, for instance. Yeah, it's you just can't unless unless we release it as, we, as unless we sign it with like the patent fee or something like that. Yeah, which is yeah, which is weird okay. because you can get. I mean, anyway, the question is like, do you really need that like granulated access mechanism because you have like complete process pipe behind it that is approving that? Yeah, I think it is, like because uh, if you think about the future, like we won't always be releasing these as OEMs. Like if you start, like, who will release them if you are not then responsible? Parties. How? What? Why? What kind of infrastructure? The current existing one. Who's responsible for that? Google. Google. Yeah. So, but then we end up in the discussion like what you mentioned. No. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you've got, like, so if, if we have a service that's predicted behind like an authentication mechanism, as long as the app is authorized, you can release it however you want. So you can release it through the Google Play Store, right? Um, but then, if the app is authorized, it can get access to that signal that it's after. That infrastructure for authorizing that lives in, in the OS and maybe talks to the cloud, the cloud service or whatever. Like if, if you go if you if you go to the smartphones, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you say I want to access the camera, 
and you, you, you specify these things in the manifest. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, and if you try to access something else, yeah. um, <coughs> basically your app will be blacklisted and kind of removed from the OSP. Right? This, this, yeah. like, it, yeah. will, it will yeah. be mo removed from the Play Store, sorry. Mm -hmm. Play Store. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, will, it, will go to, it will be rejected by the... Exactly. Yeah. And, and you, you get like blacklisted, right? And you don't have to have like additional authentication or whatever kind of authorization mechanism in order to do that. But because there is like a process behind it, who's that validating like what apps are yeah. doing? Yeah, right? I know. Yeah, that, that is, that is yeah. yeah. So yeah. if there is like infrastructure in place mm -hmm. for all this process, either like completely AOSP mm -hmm. or or going uh, going the way like uh, what you get in Google, I don't know. Like, the question is, do we really need this type of granularity? If we had the right infrastructure, then we probably don't. But we, the problem is we don't right now. I don't know what the future holds, but. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that we talked about it before, like using the Android permissions for that. So we, uh, that time we talked that, uh, okay, let's use, let's use Android permission uh, and leave the supplier or OEMs to, to, to check if the application is doing exactly thing. So I mean, like we, the signing process could be just OEM responsibility, yeah, like, right? I mean, there are two ways, right? Like you go Google way, Right, with the full stack, like the services that they provide you, mm -hmm. and then basically, like they're validating if your app is behaving according to the rules. But their rules, not yours, right? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm talking about like full stack, right? Mm -hmm. Or you go like with the open source setup, and then you create as OEM, you have like the infrastructure, or you collaborate with someone, like right around the around the app store, and basically you have a setup. But again, you have like a pipeline and process how the apps are being like actually approved and removed from that. Option B apps, right? Mm -hmm. um, because as OEMs, we are not expecting that someone will just come from somewhere and deploy the app randomly on the car and say, like, yeah, it's good. Right? But it might be. Not yet. No, you could download it from <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> but from where? Like, how we will download it? There are plenty of apps. So you, you want to push it like SDK somewhere on some like web page and then people like download it all the time, those things? ADP yeah, stuff. I believe. <laughs> okay. I don't know what's coming in the future, so there might be different. App stores for, for, for I mean, but again, they will be like app stores, right? Yeah, they will have the, some the, the, like the Android permission system is not just there for for proving something that's going in the, in the store. The Android permission system actually checks the runtime if you're at that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but if the customer decides to go like with the app store that is not validating the apps, right? Then it's sorry, but it's a problem of the customer, right? Like if they go if they go with some kind of like app store that it has a process of what kind of the applications are there, if they are like doing some kind of hacks in the background or whatever, right? Stealing the information from you. Um, I think to some extent you just want to be a bit open as well. I mean, otherwise you think in the Apple world <laughs> you cannot do anything. Um, so I think in the future, um, and I might be wrong, but Android Automotive will, will open up more in the future. I mean, it started with what media apps for cars. And now we have media navigation and media yeah. parking, and but but there will be more and more. Uh, this needs to be future proof, and even consider other app stores that are other sources perhaps at least. But actually, could you trust with hundred percent with the app store or procedures or validating? I mean, you have to have a process, right? Like even even today, yeah, even even today, like if we talk about the rollout of the software, it doesn't matter on which type of the ECU, we basically have like really long validation process for it. It's not happening like just because some developer decides to develop something nice and put it on the ECU. Because there, there is some reason why the, the applications are re being removed from the app store and yeah. the security patches have been out. I mean, we have to provide some sort of like trust to, towards the customers. And if the customer intentionally is doing like, hey, I'm downloading this app from some kind of like whatever web page and deploying it on my mm -hmm. car. Then sorry. Okay. But, but we are like, we are just customers usually when they come to us they they they, they want to have some sort of trust. Yeah, but we are discussing just the protection for the customer. But what about the protection of some kind of a? I imagine that on the car can have like can. On the on the IVI, there might be some services that are proprietary for for OEMs. I then don't want to expose it from whatever the reason to the customer. What do you mean by that? That doesn't want to expose. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean that there might be uh, some subset of of the um, of the vehicle properties. Okay. 
yeah. that are used internally by some internal services on the Android for OEM. Yeah. And you don't want to... Customer that they know that for. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. <laughs> no, I mean, like, all these things, all these things, like, I mean, even if we go today in, in our systems, I, I'm talking about, like, right, mm -hmm. setup we have. Um, if you go, for example, in the sections of the privacy menu, all the services, even like the one that are outside of the of the IBI domain, mm -hmm. right? like and that they are communicating, for, for example, like with the smart device or, or the cloud itself, you can see like in details what type of data they are actually shuffling. Right. So it's not like the, the problem is like if you get if you get like um, commission that is kind of like looking into these details and they find out something, the penalties are really high. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I was uh, maybe it's a use case to like unlocking some features that are locked. Like uh, you could buy, or you could pay some I don't know subscription model that you could have like uh, unlocking some additional feature in car in your car that you want to block. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get this. Okay. Part, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I understand the feature part unlocking and locking, but I, I, did, I couldn't connect it like to our story. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'm just, uh, you know, running in circle. Uh, let me maybe... Sorry, I didn't want to break the discussion. <laughs> no, 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 it's, uh, it's great that we could have some discussion here. Uh, but again, you, you can definitely trust your, your in-house applications. But yeah. I mean, maybe... Are maybe, you pretty sure that you can trust the third-party applications? I mean, yeah, like, if, if, we, if we start, customer. like, right now, we don't have any clear statement about third-party applications, right? Like, right now, we don't have, uh, as far as I know. I mean, maybe some of you guys know, like, um, that BMW is communicating something. But if we would come to that point of view, I believe that we would find a solution that would actually, like, include even these applications on the end, right? Um, so, um, maybe going back to, to, to the Andre comments about VISS, um, what do we like? Maybe that, that that's that's something more interesting. Um, in the in the W three C, we had discussions on how you could potentially like open the uh, mini apps that are like really popular in China or PV apps, progressive web apps like from Google coming as well. Um, and usually these type of applications, they also would like to have some sort of the API where at least they could read the state of the of the vehicle, for example, if you run them inside. This might be a bit more kind of like, you know, interesting for this type of discussion because those apps are like loaded from different like parts of the internet, right? But the one that are like, like running in this type of the systems, I believe that uh, they're controlled somehow. Yeah, definitely they, they, they are, but... Uh, I mean, if you hack it, you hack it, right? Then it's, it's a matter of trust, right? We need to trust. Yeah, you hack it. I mean, as well... Is it always a good idea because People are just sometimes making mistakes. I don't know. I mean, like, we, how many users of um, Apple devices we have here, right? Quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, if I jailbreak my phone, that's my responsibility, right? Then Apple is kind of like moving away from that. But as long as I'm like in that that flow of that specific company, then I kind of have like some kind of trust. With that. And that I think that they will do good for me as well in the sense of like applications. That they do the part of the job that they are doing. Okay, so actually, this, this sometimes so what the permissions are for. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm just like <laughs> because yeah, the, the, the example with Vinnable was, was quite okay. If you have an insurance company that, that deploys the, the application, you like this company to just get this particular VIN number and not the location yeah. and not the mileage because. We just want them to identify the, the car and then give them data from their database. Yeah, so I mean, how to do that? But that's that's also like uh, like when we talk about the telemetric data, right, and the data collection process. I mean, why would you like even deploy the application that are just collecting the data towards some other backends? Why just not re relying on the existing infrastructure that there is in place? Okay. So, because, like, if you do that, imagine, like, you have 10 different applications, and each of them is asking, like, okay, I want to have position every, I don't know, one second, then I want to send it to the backend, right? So, you can have 10 applications sending the same data to 10 different backends and basically, like, produce quite some MNO costs for 
for doing the same work that you could basically transfer one to the backend, like preferably like OEM setup backend, and then from there do these multiplexing setup. Yes, right. if we are, if we are, let's say, living in if we are talking about system. if you are talking about the, the vehicle data, if you are talking about application specific data, then of course, like it's expected that it communicates like in some sort of the backend. So it's just saying, so these are only on one use cases, right? Yeah. What about offline? Yeah. In what sense? Can you explain it? Um, well, let's just stick to Vinna. Yes, it's the perfect example. My app wants to display the Vinna. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just I'm just talking like one part is basically like releasing the process of the application of something like this, right? The other part is like collecting the data or sharing the data of the vehicle with the with the uh, sorry whatever is in the back. Okay, yeah, yeah, but that's just a different story. Exactly. Okay, yeah, 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 exactly. Because he mentioned like the story of the insurance, and usually insurance is like. Oh, we want to <laughs> have the things about the overspeeding. We want to have the things about the uh, revving your vehicle or position of your vehicle and so on. And then they basically like use this information in order to compute something and give you this code, right? Or opposite. Or the opposite. Or, yeah, or the opposite. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that was the My assumption was that you start there and then you kind of like... <laughs> um, and, and, um, yeah. So that, that was that was the discussion part. Yeah, I think it makes perfect sense to share data that's transferred once online yeah. and have an API for this for, for online scenarios. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Just just a question related to the VIN number. I mean, if if an app in my whatever Apple or Android comes up and and wants to wants to have my passport number, I'm really thinking about why would wants to have. This is like that kind of passport number. I mean, the, the win is the same. For any kind of service I ever thought in, in my research topics, I never I never needed the win. Even not in the onboard use case, because then I have the data there, and for no calculation <coughs> onboard, I need the win. Because, I mean, I don't need my passport number for being me. I mean, only if I leave the country. Maybe we actually have a couple of applications that haven't been released yet, but that requires that number. Uh, but that's just a, that's just a use case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 I mean, I, I think the yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Is, there, is there any other free uh, system that will commercially never work for people? Maybe maybe just a yeah. second example other than the bin. Um, yeah, mileage. Mileage has system level permission. Yes. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that doesn't make sense, right? Yeah, okay. I mean, that, you probably want that that wants you, that your service is Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. I mean, but the, the, then then maybe you have to ask, well, why did Google hand over the, uh, I mean, did the mileage that high, high priority, you know, for high permission? Yeah, it's, it's a bit weird, like all these read only things have system level permissions. Mm -hmm. But there is no like permission called mi mileage. There is a call like car information, yeah, something yeah. like this, right? Yeah. So if you everything is bundled. With that. Yeah. So if you obtain that, you you're able yeah, to you, you gather VIN, yeah, gather something. Exactly. But in the manifest, then you specify that you need mileage. No. no. Why not? <coughs> Because it's in manifest, you are just it's permission. Good. Like I want to have an access to car information. Let so me say, the, right? You give an example of accessing camera. The case is that. Uh, there is no camera privilege. There's multimedia camera. Uh, yeah. Which yeah. Even even if it is camera, you want to you know check if it's like capturing pictures or uh, you know recording a movie, something like this. And speed as well. It's like you this great application. So the problem is about granularity, right? So even if you have this review process, it might be much more easier if you just look at the manifest, okay, the application is doing this and this and this, instead of looking into the code, what kind of uh, Actually, permissions it's... In, in, in quite the same situation. So you, you would like this, this application to just read the VIN, so you have to somehow check it. And somehow you have to store it in the information that this application is just a VIN, not anything else. And the question is, Okay, you can store this application check on the validation process, on the validation path. Yeah. Or you can do it on, on, on your device. Also. <laughs> so just, just to, to I, I know I know that you can, like don't get me wrong. I mean there are like a lot of systems doing this. But the question is like what's the app? Uh, actually this idea is originating from, from a mobile mobile phone, so all the pieces are there already. The case is just the granularity. It's a small piece that is missing. 
course, so the, the Google team has thought about it, so we're assuming that they thought about having mileage as a system level permission, but actually got it out of the <coughs> just and left it there by default. Yeah, okay. Don't you have the power to influence? You have, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, so just be nice uh, to get a <coughs> point on that. So to, to me, this issue of like granularity seems to be quite generic to not just Android, but all of the car data that's been discussed in Provisa. Mm -hmm. So getting actually getting the this car data, like the second bin number, out through the cloud through some other service, even if it's on Linux, that wants to via some insurance web app that wants to get the bin number to do something. Someone, either the OEM or as a group or, or a standard needs to authorize a particular app to access that particular piece of information. So whether it's coming out of a Linux system or an Android system, whether it's coming out of the system through the cloud or through the how into the system itself, that, that kind of issue granularity needs to be considered throughout. And I just wonder if is Covisa thought about having or like like tackling that element. Actually, start having some kind of like sorry. Oh, sorry, just to finish up, having some kind of OEM um, approval process for not just like an app to access all the car data, but an app to access this specific bit of data from the tree. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, I mean, that's a big topic, but someone's going to have to make that decision of who, which app can access which part of the data. And is that something that Covisa <coughs> should try to think of? Because I think if it, if they can, then you'll be independent of the OS. And then it just, it just becomes like an implementation detail of how to do it on Android. And then once within that, how it, each OEM actually internally implements it. So you're saying that Covisa should own some kind of a security policy for or so create? Correct me if I'm wrong, but actually, I believe that we are uh, exercising precisely this, this kind of approach with VSS layers and putting uh, additional uh, permissions to the VSS description and then uh, generating additional information for the services. Or yeah, it was done in this authentication service here, right? But we are still using the Android uh, permission system for that. But uh, it can be a part of the VSS layer that we could specifically tell that this leaf should have this permission or even agree that each leaf will have a pair of two permissions for read and write. So we like if we have uh, thousands of of leaves, then we have like two two thousand of of new Android permission. I don't know if, if it's not a messy. Yeah, because uh, it should be a generic permission model that is supplied through all of Covisa applications. Mm -hmm. So any system that's using any system that's output in uh, VSS uh, data either mm -hmm. internally or externally out of that vehicle could comply with this new authentication system that Covisa could find. And then you as an application developer, either internal in the OEM, like uh, like in your case, you need this in your internal apps, or through external resources like a web, mm -hmm. web app, can then go to this, this potentially Covisa system and say, oh, I want to get access to this particular mm -hmm. bit of information. So I need to get given, get given that for this particular permission that gets put mm -hmm. on the tree. Yeah, but the question is how to actually authenticate if that's the correct application that should have a right access to the to the properties. So it's a bit of an implementation detail, isn't it? Like you know, you, you, you could issue you as a as, a, as the, this this group authentication group could issue some some, some certificates that needs to be bundled into the app. And because I mean, you, you must be thinking of some. Uh, authentication system already, right? You was saying to communicate between the app that wants the bin number and then the system services output in the bin number. Mm -hmm. Like, could we generalize that? Mm -hmm. And then, all of, regardless of the OS, regardless if it's an internal app or external app, could we use this? This same generic, generic permission model that's not specific to under permissions or Linux. Mm -hmm. So you're just saying about the model of the permission, not about uh, authentication or checking if the permissions are granted or not, or granting the granting the permission. Ideally, you say. Like the same entity would handle both, but yeah, maybe that's too big a picture, and maybe only one of them can be tackled. Mm -hmm. But I just, I just feel like there will be a real value to that, uh, just across the industry, not specifically to Android or specifically mm -hmm. to Linux, mm -hmm. or specifically to Covisa. Back to what the question before was saying, if there's then 
an architecture to effectively allow access to anything, and then actually the keys to that are handled by a complete third party outside of Google, they're going to be even less likely to like some sort of architecture. <laughs> I mean, I, I just don't. I wonder if they need to be involved because, um, like in, like in the case of what you were proposing, you as the OEM are getting the data out of their hub into your uh, privileged service, and that service directly could be the one that authenticates with the app and checks this new model, this new permission model. So I don't think it needs to involve either the app store process or. Oh, I'm not saying. Yeah, I'm not saying. It'd be involved in the app store process. It's just a, a, another mechanism outside of Google's control, <coughs> controlling what's happening with the data, which they've already gone to some lengths to control as it is. Do you think they will have a problem with that? I, I don't know. It's just a, I, I feel like something heard earlier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. But I think he said that it was specific to guest services. But yeah, I don't know if it applies. I don't, not, I don't know anything, any, well, such a thing applying to the B half of it. Because the chain of trust seems to be like they, they would they because you can write you can platform sign your service that has yeah. to do all of this data, they're trusting that the OEM can access that data. Mm -hmm. So then what the OEM does with it, I guess in my point of view, maybe shouldn't matter to Google. And as long as the chain of trust then between the OEM and the app, which could be something that Covesa facilitates, mm -hmm. then hopefully that should come within the realm of, of Google, but I don't know. And there is there is the right for the user to access the data, which yes. in this case actually supports the use case of having having access to it and granting access. I mean, the problem they have is the moment you put glass as a logo, it's their brand behind that. So if you as a OEM start exposing things, no matter how, and some customers say, Hey, this glass solution is exposing this and I don't like it, it's Google behind. If you go Android only, AOS it's not Google right there. It's open source. So it's, I don't know. You can try. <laughs> what, <laughs> what I didn't know is that if you, as an OEM, release an app, um, you the OEM is then fully liable for the application, and Google doesn't really check it. He it lies, does. He it, they do check it. But not, not extensively. Well, the moment your, your app is asking for system permission or some permission, they will say, come on, why? Mm. And they will ask a report. Maybe I shouldn't say okay. They will ask a report of why are you really asking for this? Okay. I so I mean if you don't comply with that and they find you, they will tell you. But again, I come from an OEM that was not doing automotive, but I would imagine that spreads across mm. all the other. And if now Google is taking over, you mentioned maybe 65% of the market or whatever in the automotive, and you try to unify APIs and everything, isn't that they need to change this a little bit? That they must work closer to the OEMs I, and that I think that's give them right. much better support. And yeah. It can't be, be like amazing. it's a happening every second month, every six months when the new Android mm -hmm. is coming in, ripping away all the work you spent during the last six months. It cannot be that way. No one will accept that in the long run. Right? Ask more about for manufacturers. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah, more about, yeah, that's consumer, maybe that's, that's still a problem, of course. But automotive is much more concerned from this perspective. There are much more safety regulations. I mean, mobile yeah. phone can be, as you said, bricked or something that it will not burn up. It will burn up. It will not be self destruction in five seconds or anything. But a car can actually. More or less hit whatever round you can really make a war by hacking cars. So it must be that they get better control and, and be more involved in what's happening. So what you are doing here, but no one will hear about this. So I think that, that would be a, maybe um, we are all technical here. Mm -hmm. We like technical solutions, but would it be better that we gather these thoughts and say, "Hey, Google, we are these twenty companies, and we yeah. want these more granular." Yeah, I would, I would imagine yeah. that would be better than come up with a more technical solution. Yeah. I don't know, I'm going to be naive. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not naive. It's like, I mean, you can always create the workarounds around the system. Exactly, you can always, but it will be fighting against them. So yeah. they will. They will. They will. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
mm-hmm. and Google merge a new thing, then oh, I need to do it again. Yeah. And then you just somehow are visibly you know, yeah. there in the government. What I would like that from the police side is that OEMs they have access to Google. They can complain to Google. But I would imagine app developers and this, they don't have access to, to Google. So I, I hope that as Covesa, Covesa, sorry, we, we can say to Google, hey, we are these many app developers, or I don't know, and we would like to be heard. And because if I go as a startup to Google, I don't even know who to bring in. That's, that's, mm, that's, that's the problem. <laughs> Covesa, I can maybe say, hey, we are this demand, or that demand, but uh, we would like to. Yeah, it gives you a different position. And then, then, then yeah, like you can move to a different market to China, right? Um, so Chinese government might have to push around like hardware even more than what's coming from Google. Right? In that market, like Google is not relevant at all. Um, I mean, and, and we sell cars there. So uh, again, like same approach and discussion trying to provide a solution better like that will fit with US is, is something that, that, that makes sense. Well, if we come up with a solution that, you know, that is open source, they might just use the same without the anyway. Yeah. So, uh, we did that in the past as well. Just I think you're more than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was listening and I was like, ah, okay. <laughs> they reinvent the wheel for everything. So. Yeah. But yeah, 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 let's try. I mean, for so like, what do you think about contributing to Google? At least have a discussion with them. Yeah. Why are you asking me? <laughs> 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 because I don't want to be doing in the past. So. <laughs> there is not also a elemental problem. So the, the OEMs or whatever, they are using Google, the Android framework, the, the mm-hmm. tier ones and everything. And they actually invent a lot of workarounds because they, they're not happy with the operating system. Yes. They don't contribute. That's they true. don't outsource it or they don't send it back. That's they, true. They, they make these changes. They actually keep it, or they don't share it with other OEMs. Uh, so maybe it's also among our community that we need to change. Yes, exactly. But it, it already happened for the mobile world when Android was pretty much immature. So it was lacking a lot of features. Each uh, phone manufacturer created the same features for their own, just to differentiate or from the from the um, competitions, right? Like multi-window or some kind of integration of some custom stuff. I mean, like teaming. Yeah. What what would be quite nice is that. I mean, based on these discussions, we, we, we could create like a proposal. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to have like you know full stack implementation. Just mm-hmm. We have like some like, roughly uh, reference implementation and basically go into the discussion and say like, hey, we need a bit more granularity um, in order to have this like in the scope. Can you guys provide something like this in the future regarding the Android stuff, right? Um, same thing goes like uh, that's the reason why I ask you like um, it's. In, in the way how do you have like these attributes, but the question is like how do we extend them? For us, for the BMW, we use heavily VSS, right? Mm-hmm. For us, it would it would be quite nice that basically you just have like an option that I go from the VSS directly into that uh, description of the Android without any kind of like work. translations or something. I mean, you you have to flat it. You have to use like last part of the I don't know of the VSS element. But it would generate it automatically. Mm-hmm. Just saying. And the same thing we could discuss again with them. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true, but always yeah, it but depending on the use case. You are just yeah, a one OEM. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, <coughs> regarding as well these like elements, in the, in, the, in the VSS side, we have like kind of proposal how you can maintain that as an OEM, even if you take it internally, how you can public like how you can publish the parts of the VSS that you want to share with the other OEMs, like to align it. There's a tooling, you can as well like develop the governance setup and so on. Mm-hmm. For the A, like for the, for the VHAL parts, something like that doesn't exist. So you, you, you have to do things on based on your gut feeling, right? Let's call it like that. And if I can transition from something that is like already kind of like working, it, it would like help a lot, I would say. It sounds like you might want to open source wherever you want. It sounds like you already have some solution for that. No, actually not. Okay. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good project like this. No, actually not. Like for, for us, like right now we have a usage um, on our data architecture. So if you for example use the my BMW application, uh, that one is using like VSS descriptions. So fifteen million vehicles are connected. Um, that's that's what we do. 
Uh, we had as well a bit of activities like how we can improve this setup of the data architecture on the vehicle side. But when we talk about the, the communication part, right, this is something that we are still like exploring. Right? And the Android could be as well one of the runtime environments that, that is kind of like interesting for us. Yeah. But I'm not that optimistic that Google will ac accept that proposal. If you go with that attitude, they will never accept it. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why. About 50 million vehicles <laughs> That's why we propose that, okay, Google doesn't care about our solution. We need to propose some uh, legacy one to no. still satisfy. We have, we have to talk a bit more. Yeah, but I, I guess it's our Always first. also doing things with Android. Uh, we had uh, Renault, mm -hmm. Renault is releasing Megane. Uh, Fiat is doing something, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all of us, we have kind of similar problems. Yeah. I, I don't know how it works in the automotive, but if we are automotive, Different OEMs, they have direct contact with other, but you don't see what the other OEMs are asking. Yeah. And I would hope that this is the place where this Where we can discuss yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Without ending up in a cartel. <laughs> <laughs> So what is the angle address that we should send? I don't know. Some question. And that's, that's the problem. No, it's not a problem. I mean, we can find out. Like, yeah. like we, I mean, there's a person from Google we can ask and see like if we can have some sort of open session between Covesa and, and, uh, and, and Google, right? And okay. see how we can like address these open questions. I think I see that more valuable than kind of like trying to solve something in parallel and, and yeah. solve something like a perfect solution. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is a additional one session for the Android today, and yes, one of the topic is exactly the same thing, right? That so we have to lobby. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yes. But do you know if the Covesa marketing team will join us? Because they, they will probably be the yeah. Perhaps, yeah. It, it's it's uh it's called it's like marketing stuff, so it will be like high level, not implementation or developers. Uh, the communication with Google has to come for like the official. Always a marketing channel as opposed to like a technical yeah, perhaps. technical approach. Yeah. So next time you lock the door, the business doesn't slow down the door. Yeah, you can find a way. And I think you lost the experience. This must be very fast. I think it's a good sign that they are actually showing up. And they sound like that. Yep. So even if it's very new, I mean, it can be a, some sort of pipe into Google in some way to really get all the frustration with them. And even if you OEMs that are already working with them uh, maybe express this on a daily basis, I don't know. <laughs> so, That's true. Okay, I guess that we are 10 minutes after the slot. So, uh, oh, welcome everybody to, to join our weekly, to check the status there uh, and the progress, of course. Uh, if somebody is interested into this translator, uh, vehicle hull unit before Google agrees to replace their own framework with, with the one driven from the industry. And perhaps, yeah, the, the, the permissions or granularity needs to be also evaluated, maybe some kind of structured a little to be understandable by somebody uh, that were not attending this meeting. Uh, yeah, that was all that I prepared. Sorry, do you mind dropping a couple of links where to find it? Ah, sure, sure. Uh, where to find uh, the, the generator, right? Well, at least a good starting point for all of this information. Is the wiki in Covesa? Yes, sure, sure. I, uh, there is a weekly... I will put all the links. I don't know if I have... Such info here. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Actually, I don't know where is the where to. 
Let me check if it's Usually it's somewhere on the Confluence page. Okay. Okay, I'll find it. I lost the internet connection and I'm not able to connect again. Internet. Yeah, I'll try to uh, involve Paul maybe to yeah. to send such. Perhaps the recording will be somewhere stored. And with the recording, I'll try to share the slides with the links, if it's fine.